All right, this video is to um, conference report and to, to, and to be serious and other reasonable people on this subject of the um, animals being animal aware or yeah animal and plant awareness, specifically the plant awareness. But I'm not going to let up the middle ground. We have to talk about the middle ground. But you know, uh, conference report and to be serious. I certainly don't want you to um, mistake my reply to in Menham as representative as my general view to your position. I don't think it's unreasonable and I recall uh, well that that would be a lie. I've sort of always had the feeling that everything living was you know on the same side of this being aware of something uh, and uh, you know I watch dance and to me watching they need, are aware of certain things and not of others. They I mean they don't seem to be aware of you watching them but they certainly are aware of some things. You can make them aware of you, interacting with them. Um, but um, but anyway, I see that a, a reasonable side to this position. So let me do a couple things. First of all, maybe we can change to the word aware for a bit. Okay, um, and and just follow this reasoning. I only know about my own awareness or consciousness. I know that sometimes there's objects in my presence and I'm aware of them and sometimes I'm not you know the object might be behind me but it could even be in front of me but I just haven't recognized or focused on it you know and uh, maybe I'm subconsciously aware of it even lots of subtleties this is where I get the, the main meaning that that means the most to me anyway but when I look at another person or another animal you know, uh, I don't have any access to that subjective experience. What I have is, you know, I can tell if they're aware of me because then they react to me differently. You know, when I'm moving towards them, if they're aware of me, then, uh, you know, they react differently. And I watch the cat, you know, with the bug, you know, and who is aware of who, you could tell, you know. And, uh, you know, the bug doesn't seem too aware of, of the cat, even once the cat has been bugging it, uh, no pun intended. Um, but the cat's aware of the bug. But, um, so, um, anyway, we, that's how we judge awareness in general, right? In most cases, because we're just one case. The statistical case is behavioral. Okay. So I see uh, living creatures react to their food sources and, uh, and sometimes dangers, known dangers, poisons. Uh, and I see them react to that, okay? And to me, I just, by looking at the, the behavioral, you know, the experience of it, that as we see this phenomenon, it satisfies what we're talking about consciousness. So at that point, um, or awareness. So at that point, we're really just trying to say, well, how could that awareness be represented? Now, the idea that it could only be represented in neurology, why? I mean, I don't see any reason other than, well, that's something we have. <laughs> that the things that plants don't. I mean, there's no reason with the, the, how complex um, the simplest life form is in terms of chemicals. Uh, it's plenty complex enough that anything that could be represented electrically uh, in the nerve system or electrochemically it could be represented chemically. As a matter of fact, it's almost assured when you think about the fact that neurons are just cells that have this special kind of chemical receptor that's really it's hooked up to a virtual reality, it's hooked up to other nerves. And these are receptors that normally would be triggered by a chemical, the presence of a chemical, but they're triggered by a, a contact, an electrical contact. Now the cell for billions of years has knows how to deal with uh, chemical signals, um, but it has this thing coming in, you know, that's it, like an analog. So through a the interface that you know chemical receptors hold, right? That's what it evolved from, the kind of chemical receptor. So. That implies that, you know, those signals could also probably just be done with chemicals. The main advantage of neurons is that they're faster. Okay. So now with anybody that's like, um, uh, just 
intellectually mature, um, you know, I, I assume that, uh, you know, that, that we don't, like, you know, that anybody intellectually mature isn't really going to press this idea that um, an amoeba is just like a simple machine, easily made and stuff. I mean, this this whole using information to sustain the process rather than the process just running out and, and not seeming to be aware of uh, of its environment or any of the elements of its survival. I mean, this is a huge, huge thing. Something we've never figured out how to do or even how it's possible. Um, we got to throw nets over it and capture the phenomena. Now, we do see these kinds of phenomena of awareness and reaction. I don't know why you're saying that it has to be fundamentally different in the same behavior in humans. Now, you, you say, well, I don't, can't imagine the subjective experience in someone else. I, I don't really want to base our analysis of nature on if you can project yourself you can project yourself into another human. I don't believe you can really do that either. This is all uh, imagination. Now, I have no trouble projecting myself into other animals. And I know that the further they are from me as a human, the more fantasy it is, the less realistic, likely, just by general you know, reasoning, is going to be less likely to be accurate. Like, there's a, a good essay on this about pretending to be a bat. Now, bats have senses we don't even have. How do you imagine that? You know, it's probably easier to imagine uh, being a single-celled creature that, in some sense, with the chemical system, um, is aware of sugars and waters and other chemicals, and, uh, you know, how to avoid them or seek them out. You know, it's probably easier because that's a subset of things, you know, we do. You know. But if, if you had a whole new sense, which also the single celled creatures probably have senses, uh, in that sense that, that, that we don't, you know, can't imagine, uh, other than through this metaphor, which isn't going to be accurate. So, okay, you can't figure it out perfectly. I can't figure it out perfectly for another person. Their eyesight's different, etc., etc. It just happens to be closer because of our genetic similarity. We can't base it on that, okay, on, on how much you're willing to project your own subjective idea out there. This is a reasoning for us to do according to the solipsistic, you know, standards as far as I'm concerned. You have to argue based on, not based on sharing your subjective experience and pretending you know other humans have it, but just go with what you actually know. You see their behavior. Uh, it leads you to believe that, and this extends out. And, and I don't think it stops while there's living creatures, because they all react to food sources, right? And they all seem to process information. I can't define the information exactly, but I think we have some good hints at it, you know. Uh, it's, you know, events that give energy, um, sometimes slight amounts. This energy is amplified and stored and then rerouted to through circuitries of various sorts, including chemicals, um, which can work as just like circuits, logic circuits. You know, the quantum computers are. Oh my God, I said quantum computer. Anyway, they're done in you know chemical solutions. But anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I would just like you to 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 picture it this way, <coughs> and and. You know, we're still allowed to say that the the awareness that a flower has of the sun is, is very different and alien uh, compared to the awareness that a human has of the sun. Right? And um, but why not say it's it's living and it's reacting to it? What else do I get out of a human being that they speak in words? I mean, that's just yet another behavior, right? I mean, it seems to me that it's very anthropocentric because we're relying on our 
familial relations with other humans to go, sure, you're conscious. But if you just take the subjective experience as totally personal and not to extend, and you look at what you grant awareness, then the, the fundamental differences between, you know, the rock and, you know, the life, that there is a difference between the soap suds or some reaction that spends itself and an reaction that seems to seek out and make decisions that extend the you know, life of it. I th it's, it's an obviously fundamental thing. And, and, and so why wouldn't we use this language? No, really, no matter what, it ends up meaning, how it ends up being, you know, aware. Because, yeah, we, we, we find out in simple life forms, it's like, well, it's a reaction thing. You know, and it's because this, this, and this, and look, we can recreate it. Fine, but we're made out of just, you know, billions more of the very same thing. So, you know, another thing <coughs> is this idea of neurons being conscious kind of on their own, separate. Well, I, I think that's the most logical idea. We know there's not a center of the consciousness now, right? So we have to give up on the whole that there's a center for it. You know, even the br brain's not a center. It's all this distributed stuff. So somehow that program can make something that feels like it's just one thing. Or the whole body does it or whatever. It comes from somewhere. But whatever it is it's doing is distributed. There isn't just a little place. Okay. So, um, the consciousness of the whole brain is going to be a cooperative consciousness of the brain cells. And the brain cells are conscious of different things, but the pattern of their overall awareness of, of what they're signaling and doing is a consciousness of, of something bigger. And it can happen so clearly, yeah, because they're neurons and they work fast. Uh, uh, but uh, they wouldn't work fast if it's just chemicals, but you can signal all the same kinds of things with chemicals that you can do through nerves, except you can't quite be as localized, right? You can't send it to a particular... Okay, so it's probably not going to be quite as vivid because the communication is not as sharp. But you can still communicate a lot of things and a lot of accurate things. Like when you think about the heliotropic phenomena, right, it's getting a light pattern that's actually somehow transformed into the right programming to pump ions into tissues, you know, all different amounts to make that thing crane. And if the sun were to move, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's tracking the sun. It doesn't just know where the sun's going to go for sure, so right, it's tracking. So if the sun were to go around like that, I wonder if somebody must have done this uh, with sun lamps, get, to, get them to point towards the sun. Uh, so they have some way to, to, to to balance, that's pretty pretty high-tech stuff and when you talk about a computer doing it, but they're doing it biologically, the way you do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I understand the position, but I think that it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of anthropocentric. It's the, it's the only explanation. I don't understand why <clears throat> the reaction is, is so strong otherwise. I mean, so what? They look aware. Why wouldn't we use the word aware? What are we trying to rob them? When it's, it's a, it's a phenomenon. We use that language all the time. Like the sun rising. You want to say, well, but it's not really that. But what else? We don't really have another, you know, option. Right? I, I really think that I can make as a requirement. But if, if you disagree, I don't mean it as an insult then. But just tell me. Is, do you, is it not fair to say that it's... Uh, the idea that a single cell life form is simple like a clock or a machine or soap suds or anything, I don't have to argue about that, right? I mean, I don't have to argue about that. It's just a matter of learning. What they're like. We all know that already. So, anyway, cheers.